We have taken a vote. I hope you all have had an amazing summer. Um, this is our kindergarten through second grade orientation. This is our first time doing it this year since COVID. We really want to get on the same page this year as a family. We consider ourselves a school family. Um, our kindergartners, I see a lot of my amazing parents came back, thank you. And then we have our new kindergarten families that we're really excited to work with. And of course we have our returning first graders and second graders. So it's an exciting year. Our kindergartners are going to first grade, can you believe it? And then our first graders are going to second graders. So already before your eyes, they're growing up. I know, let's get them a hand clap. It was hard in kindergarten. Come on with the kindergarten. And they had some summer school program. The kids worked hard over the summer. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, this is where we ended in the gym. We made it last year. All of us took a nice picture to remind us coming out of COVID and coming in school consistently was very difficult. So we had a hard time. We took a group picture together to say we are excited. I am Miss Shanita, the head of school. Just a little bit about me. That's my husband, Maurice, and Marlena's my daughter. I love to read and listen to music and I love what I do. Spent a lot of time in the last 15 years. Although I look young, I've started out as a behavior specialist, went into principalship, and I'm just on fire for MMA. Uh, every year I'm just like, okay, bring it. What can I do to really level up and bring our kids more opportunities? So I'm excited to work with you all in developing our amazing staff and students here. So who do we have on the team? Again, I'm the head of school here. I have our Montessori coach who's not here yet. She will be starting next week. Her name is Miss Eugene. I have Mr. John, who was our sixth grade teacher, is moving into a different role. He'll be working in the classroom as an MTC coordinator. I'll tell you a little bit about that later, what that means. Then I have Miss Renee, who's over here holding this camera. She is our literacy coach. She was our reading specialist. She'll be doing some reading specialist work with students, but she really will be coaching our teachers on how to sustain reading. Let me be very clear, if your, can't, your kid cannot read, they already stopped at the door. It is very important that we get our kids reading. And so she's gonna help support that. We have a student advocate um, that we're working on, I'm hoping to put in place, which is our person that did a lot of the behavior and social emotional support. We have a social worker named Mr. Ben. I don't expect you to remember these names, but I want you to know with all the people that's in the building here to help your child. Our wonderful staff, we met Ms. Dominica, the kindergarten teacher at the door passing out stuff. Um, we have Ms. Lauren, who many of you all worked over the summer, and I'm in the process of hiring for one kindergarten teacher, okay? And then for first grade right now, we have Ms. Charlene and Ms. Jennifer. Ms. Jennifer's here. Ms. Jennifer has been teaching for a long time, and she's hopefully gonna be moving into that reading specialist position, so I'm looking for one more first grade teacher as well, okay? Had some great interviews today to make sure we get the high qualified teachers that are ready to really work with our kids. That is my goal. Um, then we have Miss Darlene for second grade. She's over there. Miss Darlene Wade. And then Miss Latoka. She was kindergarten. We moved Miss Latoka up to second grade this year. Some of the kindergarten parents may have had her. Mr. Darren will be going to third grade. Miss Tiana fourth. Miss Tanisha fifth. And uh, Miss Karen will be taking sixth grade this year. We have some amazing supportive staff. We have a gym teacher, her name is G, and we have music here for the for kids. Her name is Miss Miranda. And so your kids will get music and gym, and they also get additional resource room support at least every other day they rotate their uh, specials. And your teacher will give you that schedule once we get started. Miss Gill is our resource room teacher. And then here in the Montessori model, we have teacher assistants. So kindergarten through third grade, there's an extra person in that classroom. So you have two adults and they're working together. Um, last year, it was hard for us to get them in place. We have a really good team going in this year. Fourth, fifth, and sixth will have to share a TA because the budget would not allow me to have individual teachers in that room with another teacher. But the kindergartens, the second and third grade, they need that additional support. So you will have TAs, Ms. Renee, Mr. Mike, Ms. Molly, Ms. Malika, Ms. Talise, um, Shanae, and Ms. Linda. Those are our TAs that you will know in the classroom, and some of you already may know their names. So that's our team here at MMA. We're still looking for some um, additional support. Like I said, we're hiring for a kindergarten and a, a first grade teacher to make sure we get it right. Um, our goal here is to make sure that we provide a safe and positive learning environment. We wanna challenge our kids. The Montessori model really lives for the kids not sitting in their seat all day. 
They really are working together as groups collaborating, having conversations, and they do need to work independently. So we have to cultivate that. So for my kindergarten parents, can you raise your hand? That's the kindergarten parent. Ooh. Welcome, welcome, welcome. First grade parents, can you give them a hand clap? Y'all went through that now. I'm gonna tell you, it's hard letting go that kindergarten. Because those are your babies, right? And then they get here and they're like growing up. You're like, wait a minute, stop, I'm ready. You gotta be ready. But it, it was okay, we had some bumps here and there, but you can see as they grow, we're gonna grow with you. But they have to have some independence. We don't sit them in their chairs all day and tell them what to do all day. They have to be willing to grow and learn and ask questions. And so as kindergarten parents, you're gonna see your kids, your teachers asking them to do more and we want you to support that because they can do it. And we noticed that when jumping to kindergarten, those kids were stepping up to the challenge and doing it. We say every day our morning announcements, our theme this year is grow with us. Our students, um, we say as a staff, I will develop and support my students to grow at MMA. Students, can you, my first graders and my second graders, you should know this. Remember, let's repeat after me. I can try and work hard to grow every day. So our morning announcements, every day we have the kids say that. What you put in your child is what they spit out. I know that sounds a little weird, but whatever they hear and see every day and they believe, they'll rise to the occasion. So that is something that we believe they can grow. School can be intimidating and overwhelming, but together we really try to put things in place. So that is what we're doing here for our new parents. That's something your kids will be saying. We are a Montessori school, and our, get, our goal is to have your kids become more responsible and have wings of independence, okay? So when the first week of school, you are gonna see if they need a little help. But as they get used to school, you don't have to put their backpack up. You don't have to put their lunchbox away. You don't even have to walk them to class like that. Because what happens is, if you keep doing it for them, they're gonna expect it. So you gotta let go a little bit, my kindergarten parents, because in the beginning, it's gonna be hard. First grade parents, it was hard at first, right? But as you get to know the teachers in the communities, you feel more comfortable. And it's nothing, that's just great parenting when you're worried about your kids. That's nothing, that's no slide, but it's important that they learn how to do those things because that is our model. They have to try and learn on their own, and we need that for parents to start at home. So here's the model story. I'm not gonna go over this in detail. But here is some things you will see in the classroom. You can see the picture. You may come in the classroom and think they're playing. They're not playing. They're actually learning. The building of the blocks, the counting, all of that's preparing, color, size, all of those things they need to know. We introduce, and I wanna say this to parents, when you're introducing letters, start with the sound. Anybody can say the alphabet. Kids have memorized that, right? But they need to be able to identify the sound. So it's not something that kids are used to because we sing the alphabet and think they know their letters. The state is requiring not only do they need to identify their letters, they also have to know the sound in that letter, okay? So that's something that you will hear us preach. Yes, we know ABC, all of that good stuff, but we wanna make sure you know these are the things we do in the classroom that are more hands-on learning. So just some expectations, we're almost done. Attendance and academics, what do we need? Last year we had a lot of kids missing. 50% of our kids missed 20 days or more. The fact that y'all showed up, don't tell me y'all kids gonna be here. I need the kids in school. If they miss, obviously you call the front office, they sit, they need to stay home. But it's important that the kids, even kindergarten, that they're here every day. Because what they're required to learn is important. So my job this year with the staff is to improve the attendance. We have to do better than 50% of our kids missing 20 days or more is too much. If they're not here, they're not learning. And at the end of the year, if they fall behind, we don't want to have that conversation about repeating grades. So it's really important that they're here. All right? Um, what are we expected to do with academics? We need to have academic growth. So kindergartens and first graders, they're building on their fundamental skills. And the state, we are, even though we're a Montessori school, we're required by the state to learn certain things and have certain growth. So for reading and math, 50% of our kids should be at their, um, at their academic growth or above. 
and they do take NWA assessments, okay? So we do have to assess our kids. People that just came in, come on in. Good to see you, welcome. Um, so what can you do to help your student? First of all, they gotta get a good night's sleep. Now, I don't know if you haven't started that summer schedule, but you might wanna start it. They have to get a good night's sleep. That is critical. It is hard to deal with an irritable six. Y'all dealing with kids that don't get enough sleep and don't eat, you know they're irritable, right? So bringing them to school is, is hard for them because their brain power is not there. They gotta get enough sleep, eat healthy, healthy foods. That helps to grow their mind, and more importantly, make sure they're supporting them. Get the students here on time, again, and communicate with the teacher if you're having issues. It starts with the teacher if you're having problems. Talk to the teacher and that way you have that relationship, then you can talk to myself and then we can talk together with the teacher because that's your student. Follow up at home with all practice work. So in a Montessori mo uh, model, there's not like all this homework every night. We ask them to practice some of the skills they already learned. Like every kid should read 20 minutes a night. That is something you should be doing with them anyways. But as they get in school, they have to be exposed to more reading. And um, also practicing, we have a program called iReady. It's a computer program where we'll give you the password and username where you are able to practice a learning program at home. We want parents to volunteer at the school and communicate with us if you have any questions or issues. Those are our expectations for parents. So this is some data. I will send this presentation through an email if you really want to look at it. But I think it's important for you to know where we're at in school. We have to have academic growth. So last year, 76% of our kids met their academic growth. Let's give a hand clap. That's 76% of the school. After coming out of COVID, these kids came up and showed out. It was hard coming out of COVID and learning and being adjusted to a school. We still have a ways to go because only 37% of our kids are where they need to be. That means they're reading at their grade level. So that's not enough for me. As the leader, it's just not enough. As it relates to math, we had 83% of students meet their growth goal. That's another hand clap. So that means I gave them a goal and they went past that goal. We, we, they can do it. And so it's exciting to see this. We're at 41, so we're close in math, and we gotta get over this 50 percentile. That's why I'm so passionate about what we're doing, because I know our kids can do it if we put in the right things in place. So, we have a lot of models here. If the kids need extra support, if we're not doing well in the classroom and the teacher needs extra support, we have an academic coach, which is a Montessori coach, we have a literacy coach, and we have Mr. John, who's our coordinator. Mr. John will work with teachers with the reading and math specialists. So your kids may be pulled out of class to get additional reading and math support. We will let you know, based on their testing, if that is the case. We also have a social worker here, and we have additional student advocate services as well, if your kid is having social emotional issues, especially with social skills. So those are the resources I need you to be aware of. Couple things I wanna bring your attention to. You see all these boxes around here? These are new learning programs. And I'm gonna step off the mic and just be loud as I can. So this year we bought a program called Passport. Can y'all say Passport? Okay, there y'all go. Let me wake y'all up a little bit. So this program is a reading supplement program. What we notice in our day is that kids, you can tell them something, y'all probably notice at home, and they forget. So like, what did I just tell you? They have a hard time understanding and breaking down words, so they have a hard time comprehending what they're learning. It's not that they don't need it, they need extra practice. So every teacher will be trained for intervention tier one. We have our Montessori materials, the moving alphabet, the letters, they have all of that working with their teachers a small group. But three or four days a week, they will have a learning book along with the teacher at a small, at their desk, working with these kids on real, Y'all remember these workbooks? Real, 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 like deep dig on these concepts. I need them to know this stuff. So what we've done is we have every kid a box. We spent a lot of resources. This is their passport to read, okay? My thing is if you don't set up systems, things are not gonna happen. So this is a system that's gonna help our kids on top of what our kindergarten and first grade teachers are doing. So if they tell you about their passport, this is what they talk about. We also bought Step Up to Writing. It's a writing program. Many of your kids may not know how to write if kids aren't first grade, second grade, but by the time they get in certain grades, they have to be able to write sentences. 
You know, it's a lot of expectations. So we bought programs for training teachers, and you will see these programs in the classroom. Last but not least, we bought one kind of program. The box is too big for you to pick up. It's called Haggerty. It's over there in big boxes, in those white boxes. It's a, the basic understanding of funding awareness. How do you sound out a word? How does words work together? How do you chunk words? It's bringing it hard. It's no joke. But it is a ticket to everything. If you can read, you can open up many doors. And so right now, we bought these programs where teachers will do it in the classroom, and then we will bring some review. You will see stuff in the newsletter saying, this is a video you should play at home. I'm asking you to support the teachers. Because if you support the teachers with these programs, you will see growth. We also are bringing back the tutoring program. Remember any kindergarten parents did the brain strain where you took your kids to tutoring? We paid for your kids to go to one-on-one -on -one tutoring, to sit with somebody, to learn. And so we will have those resources. Whatever you need to do, we need to do it together. I need these kids to read. It starts here getting our second grade. And we can't do it alone. We need parents. Amen on that? Y'all can tell us passionate about it. But obviously they don't know how to do that. But I need y'all support to practice. 20 minutes a day, they do that on their time. Make sure they're reading every day so that we can all be on the same front. So I'm excited about these programs because I think those programs are gonna help our kids. So those are our programs that you'll see in the classroom. You should have a blue folder on the first week of school. They're gonna get a t-shirt, a water bottle, a backpack, and a blue folder. The blue folder needs to come back every day. It's the communication tool. It's a way for parents to communicate with their teacher and to see what's going on with flyers, okay? We do have progress reports, parent-teacher conference, and report cards, okay? So that helps as well. And like I said, we will give you the information to iReady. We'll explain all of that as we get to that. But 20 minutes a day is what we're expecting. I'm going to skip all of this. So positive behavior intervention. Our kids are not self-regulated. And that means they struggle with their emotions. We have to learn how to work together. So we put in programs. We expect our kids to come in school uniforms, do their homework, be kind, be prepared, follow expectations, and I expect the kids to try their best. They're gonna make mistakes, they're gonna have things going on. But we have to work together. Last year, kindergarten, first grade, it was so, we had a lot of the incidents with kids hitting each other, punching. We gotta work together. So if they horseplay at home, when they get here, they're gonna horseplay. You know, they don't know the difference. So as they get to school, you have to teach them, you may do it here at home, because I can't tell you what to do in your house, but at school you can't wrestle and play, because somebody can get hurt. You have to have those conversations with your kids. Because other kids don't do it in their household, they think they plan, they haul off and slap a kid, then we have a situation that your kid hit somebody else, even if they were playing. So those are the kind of conversations that must have right now. Our expectation is they must be respectful, make good choices, and be safe. That is what we expect. We say it on morning announcements every day. We don't have cell phones here. I don't tolerate bullying. I don't tolerate fighting. I don't tolerate the back and forth and being destructive of projects or anything. If your kid is having a problem in the classroom, the teacher will contact you first. Last year we had some classrooms that were struggling with just in the classroom with other kids. So we had to push in additional support. My goal is to cut down on this year because I needed to make sure the teacher were prepared. So I'm doing more trainings with the teachers this summer on that. Because I can't have kids getting hit and hurt in the classroom. If you have a meeting with your um, teacher and if, if the behavior don't improve, then you will, your kid will get a referral to the student advocate. Student advocate gonna call you and say, we got to have a conversation. The teacher has talked to your child several times. Now we gotta come up with a plan. We're not trying to kick your kids out we're not trying to labor the kids, but at some point if your kid keep doing stuff, it's hurting other kids and we have to come up with a plan. You may have to meet with that parent. It's called a restorative circle to figure out what we're doing because if a kid hit another kid, they still gotta go to class together, but that kid may not feel safe and they parent may feel a certain kind of way. So we all sit down as a community to have that discussion. And then last but not least, after we have a meeting, we may put you on, the kid may be on the plan if they may come to my office at that point, or even the superintendent office. We try not to let it get there. Montessori model is not for everybody because it is not as structured as a traditional school. But we do know that we work together as parents, then we can make sure the kids get what they need. 
What I want to say last year a couple times, like, why do they do that? Why do you can't kick them out? Well, it's a law for me to just be kicking kids out. It's called the breathing discipline law. I can't just kick kids out the first time they do something. We have to work with them. They, their brains are still developing. So we have to put them through a process. So we have all these things we have to consider. They age, have they had a disability, the seriousness of it, the safety risks. One of the things that happened a lot last year was kids were making threats, saying things like, I'm going to kill you, I'm going to break a gun. That's a no-no. It's automatically they sent home. And then we have to do a behavior assessment. That means we have to sit down as a team and see if this kid is truly a threat. I hate doing those because the majority of the time I know the kids, but again, they're watching things, they're seeing things, so they're repeating it. Please have a conversation with your kid. They cannot bring that kind of language here. It will get them on a suspension immediately. And I don't like to do that. And then we have to go through all of these different things just to get the kid back in school. But you all know safety for schools has been a crazy situation in the last year. So when the kids say that, I can't say, oh, they don't mean that. No, I have to take it seriously. Not saying that your kid meant to say it, but just know going into the investigation, if they say it, there's consequences behind it. So when you make statements like that, I tell the kids all the time, it's not safe, okay? I want to be clear about that, but we do everything we can. We don't tolerate people just bullying, we have all kinds of conversations about that. I'm gonna pause and stop because I think it's important. Does anybody have any questions about that? Anything? All right. If you do, I'm here and we have teachers and other people here that can support you with that, but it's important that we're on the same page with behavior. The dress code, we have all the materials that if you didn't get in the mail up here, but we expect our kids to be a dress code. We do use a program called Social Emotional called Conscious Discipline, where we teach the kids how to breathe, how to use community, work together, grace and mercy. We teach them how to talk to one another. So you may hear kids coming home talking about Conscious Discipline. That's a program that we're gonna roll out with our teachers this year for training. They got introduced to it last year, and eventually we'll get parent training. If you have a kid that's having a hard time self-regulating, or expressing their emotions and they have temper tantrums and they're having a hard time, these are the kind of programs we're looking to kind of help support the child. So we're almost done. I gave you all, well I did, Ms. Dominica did, gave you all the procedures morning and PM pickup. So we're only a commute school. That means everybody's in charge of dropping their kids off. I do not have a bus yet. I'm working on it. The problem with that is in the, in the morning it's okay. For the most part, people drop their kids off through the car line. This year, you can drop your kids off. The doors will open at eight. We moved it back because we noticed a lot of kids were late. So at eight o'clock, the doors open. They have breakfast from eight to 8.20. School starts at 8.30. So we need the kids in their seats before 8.30. Otherwise, they're gonna miss a lot of things, okay? Um, when you come through the car line, because we don't need parents one of the things we had to change this year, parents coming into the school in and out. The thing about it, they wouldn't leave right away and that was disrupting the learning schedule, number one. Number two, the kids was having a whole full more meltdown at the door. So they're at school, you go to work, they kind of have that conversation. Drop them off in the back or the front. It doesn't matter where you drop them off at, okay? In the afternoon, again, we will take your kids to class. All right, I know I'm almost done. <laughs> They okay? In the afternoon is where it gets tricky. We can't have all those people in the car line. Y'all be here all day and be mad at me, okay? So when you have 200 and some parents pick it up, that's impossible to do a car line. So we will have a car line and we'll have yellow stickers this year. And we um, will tell you about our program um, where you will sign up for to let us know how your child is gonna be picked up. If you're kindergarten and first grade, which you guys are in here, you're gonna go to the back and do the car line. We will literally have your yellow tag. They call your student, your student will be sent out to you. For the older kids, we've had to use the church side as a pickup and we had to use the front entry as a pickup, okay? So those front entries, you will see where in the church side, you used to just be able to you know, park your car and come in. This year will be a little different to get things moving. You still park your car. But this time, as you're getting out your car, we, you, the app that you're going to use will dismiss your student. So we don't. What, one of the things we're trying to do is, we, this school is very small, and we have like 80 people coming in at one time. It causes safety concern. So we need to make sure the right child gets with the right key. 
You know, right, the right child get with the right parent. So that is something different. You don't need to come to the classrooms. We'll have them in the church here, ready to go, or in the gym. And as they come up, they get called out, they go with you. But you will be able to park second through sixth grade to get them. Again, it's on the map. Again, it does feel like we had to make some changes because it was just too much traffic. Um, but also, it was a lot of issues last year. And um, we want to make sure that everybody's safe. We need parents to... Uh, follow those procedures. We get out at 3:30. Please don't come. Please don't come closer to 3:30 because we need them to be in class, learning. Even at that last minute, they are learning. So, who received the email from me called Pickup Patrol? Anybody send an email from me? All right. If you did not receive an email, that's okay because I will give you the paper for you to sign up. You have to sign up for Pickup Patrol. It's a safety concern. I need to know who's picking up your kids. And also, you can let us know ahead of time. I'm picking my kids up a certain time. You could go on the app and say, hey, this is the time it'll go straight to Miss Kelly's desk. A lot of times the phones were busy because she was getting all these different people calling her. So you just go on the app, put what time, put the reason why they're leaving, and then we'll have the kids ready, okay? So that's the app. If you didn't get it before you leave, I will pass out a quick sign up. Again, I'll send it all to you all's email again, but please sign up for that because that's the way we're doing pickup. When you um, drive up and you, it's gonna say, are you here? You wanna hit, I'm here to pick up my kid. That way we get a notification, you're here, and we can get your kid ready. We're just trying to be more efficient, even with the car line. When we know you're here, we're gonna look at your tag, see the kid's tag, and send them out so that we can get things going. This is a new program, so have some patience with drop off and pick up. I don't know one school in America that do drop up and pick up. You gotta have patience. We get everybody's kids, but it's important that we get everybody there safely. And again, to communicate with the office if you are having issues. So one of the things, couple things have changed. Parent can no longer just come in the building and go to the classrooms. And this was a back and forth with me. We had a security company come in to update the doors, the alarms, the systems. And we had three parents last year it's always a small few that actually had complete meltdowns, and I had to call the police. One day y'all probably was up here and saw the police. I don't have time for that. It, it destroyed the whole classroom environment, really. And so parents can go if they have a, an appointment with Ms. Dominica. Ms. Dominica will say, I have um, Logan. There's, there's Logan mom right there coming in to do such and such. I know she's coming in. She'll get a visitor's pass. she go. But you, we used to have parents just walk in and go to the classroom, participate, do what they need to do. We have to have a notification now. You cannot just come in and sit down. I'm sorry about that, but after last year what I went through with parents and I had to go back and beg and plead my other parents because they were mad. Can you imagine your child sitting there learning and a mean parent come in and just cuss out the whole classroom? That's the stuff I was dealing with. Cannot do that. So unfortunately, Miss Kelly is going to be responsible for that. She's the one that builds people in most of the time. She's going to ask you, why are you here? What do you need? That's her job. She's not trying to be mean. Don't be mean to Miss Kelly. She's the nicest person on earth, I promise you. But that's my job to keep your kids safe because parents do get upset. And if they get upset, they lose their temper. If they lose their temper outside with me, I can take it, but you're not gonna come for my kids because they my kids once they cross that door, right? So at this point, we had to, and y'all know this is what it was before COVID. Remember, you couldn't really bring your kids in the building like that because they would like cut down on things. So we've kind of retreated a little bit back to that. I don't like it. I hope to change it in the future, but it was too much back and forth with that. And unfortunately, that caused the situation. Parents can wait in the front office if you have to drop off food or anything. We will get it to the kid as well as we need for you to make sure that you sign your kid in if you are running late. So you still have a front desk there to sign them in and we will take them to class. If they're gonna be absent, report before nine o'clock so we can get an excuse absent. And again, attendance is important here. I've talked about that. We do not do door dash for kids. The state will not let us. Please don't door dash your kid no food. You can send them a lunch, but you'd be surprised. I'm like, who ordered all this food? And a parent will call, I can't do it. And I don't want to make you mad because you didn't spend your hard money because you're going to have to come get it. The state says that we have to have a certain menu. And when you start sitting outside food, it causes a whole lot of disruption. So we have a lunch program. I send the menu out once a month. If you don't like it, then you can send your own lunch and we'll try to work within there. We're offering a couple other things for lunch so the kids can have more variety. 
Again, we will drop off your kids. You don't need to come in the building for that. Another big change, which is gonna make some parents mad, but I'm gonna take it. Last year, there was a lot of birthday parties. Woo! I think we had some kid like pizza three, four times a week, seven or eight cupcakes a week. It was a lot. And then y'all left us with them kids running around in the hallway. We're still gonna celebrate their birthdays. We take that serious. But the parents can come in with a healthy treat, whatever that looks like, let us know. We're not bringing balloons, cupcakes. You guys got to have parties outside the school. And the thing is, we only have a short period of time. We do it after 2 o'clock. Let us know. Talk to your teachers. Say, I want to come in and do a celebration. We will celebrate them through our Montessori Sunshine activity where it talks about each year of the child, what's special about the child. Every kid goes around and says something they love about that kid, and we wish them a happy birthday. We say happy birthday. So it's more meaningful rather than just doing a bunch of cupcakes. Because we had cupcakes, balloons, bags of candy. They were having parties in the classroom. Cannot do that. You can invite any kids to your birthday parties outside of school, but there won't be that back and forth. And I got in trouble with the state, with pizza and all that food coming into the classroom. It has to be regulated. COVID is not went anywhere. So if I get a whole class sick because they ate something, then that's on us too, as the state board would say. So we've had to really tighten that up this year. Again, all parents must do the iChat, which is a quick screening background check. And that allows you to go on all the amazing field trips and activities. That's to protect your child and our child all together. If there's something that comes up, I will deal with it with you. I'm not gonna keep you separate from your child. You just won't be able to go with the class, right? But I have to keep everybody safe. I need to know. All the teachers, all the staff, all the volunteers that are here, we have to do background checks. In federal, we have to do federal background checks. So I think it's only fair. If you have something, we'll talk about it. I'm not gonna keep with people for kids, but I have to get those done. Um, especially if you're going on field trips or in the classroom for hours at a time with other people's kids. Okay, let me take a deep breath. That was a whole lot of changes. Y'all still with me there? Okay now, it's for the better interest of kids. And I, this is something, I'm a community person, but we gotta be safe first. And everybody does things differently in their household and that's okay, but we have to have some consistency. So when we have an issue, we, we are gonna have issues. Especially for kindergarten, first and second grade. That's just what it is, they're learning. I'm asking you to contact the teacher first and let them deal with it. If you feel like the teacher not dealing with it, please come to me, don't just withdraw your child. Now that's not fair, right? Are they here one day, you tell me, I ain't bringing them back. What happened? Because we grow bonds and we really love your kids here. So if you feel like the teacher's not addressing it, come to me, I will work through you and the teachers and we will sit down and resolve it. You have, you have the final say for your child because it's your child. If you feel like what I said wasn't good enough, we have a superintendent. Her name is Miss Carey. And then from there, we have another stage, which is the board. Okay? So we have stages here. We want your kids here, but we need to communicate. Last year, again, we had some threats. If you make a threat, if you go into a classroom and there's a lot going on, you're going to be banned from the campus. Which means I'm not gonna tell you that your kid can't come, but you'll have to have some, we'll have to bring your kid out. It was a no trespassing. I will not tolerate threats on my staff, on my students, on other parents. We just have to learn how to talk here. And I even have to hate to have this conversation, but it happened so much last year. For whatever reason, people were upset, because I know these y'all babies, but I'm not gonna let anything hurt them. If something happened, I'm gonna stand in front of them. I guarantee you that, because this is what we signed up for. So please, please, please follow these. Do not get upset, upset to the point where we can't resolve it. The kids are watching us. So we can't resolve conflict in the right way. They're picking it up the wrong way. And we can't get mad at kids when they do what they do. Because they're learning from adults. So please, please, please come see me so that we can make sure that we're making those threats. I mean, those threats are not happening. Here's the fun stuff. We go on a lot of field trips here. Last year we went on nine. They were like, another one? Yes. We take a trip, field trip, probably once a month. Science Museum, the Cranbrook Museum, we're going to the zoo. We have the little critters coming. We're going to the Nature Center. This year we will be going to the African American Museum. Last year we went to Henry Ford. You must sign up ahead of time. The first week of school you will get a permission slip for all the field trips. Please sign up. The cost is only for the parent. The field trips are free for kids here. You do not have to pay for your child, but you do have to pay for yourself. Um, and then we have after school clubs that start in October. It is first come, first serve. Please sign up. You'll get it again. That's why it's important that you sign up for mine. You want your teacher communication. 
Because some people are like, I didn't get it. You have to be on these because we send them out quite a bit, all right? All right, I am pretty much done. You had a QR code. Make sure you sign up for events. Make sure you sign up for iChat. And make sure you sign up for the parent-student agreement. All of those things, if you don't do it here, please do it at home. That kind of really sets us up for who's coming and planning. Again, these are all my communications for Remind. We do a s'more on Sunday. I send a newsletter out letting you know what's happening for the whole week, okay? So that you're prepared with activities. And of course, the parents um, can get on the teacher's dojo or transparent classroom. It depends on what the teacher wants to do, but we do do jo dojo here as well. Um, I've said a whole lot. We do have a YouTube channel you can add to. And of course, our most important thing is we want the kids to have fun. So we are having our back to school bash on Saturday the 26th and two weeks here. Here out here on the campus, it's nice, bump, all kinds of bouncy houses, DJ, food. Come on out, let's have a good time, let's celebrate each other. You'll be, the teachers will be um, ready to go because that'll be, a lot of their contracts have started by that time. So you'll meet your classroom teachers and you'll be able to answer questions, see the classrooms. Uh, we didn't have classrooms available today only because the carpet was clean and we have furniture in the hallway, we don't want anybody to fall. But that day, the whole classrooms and everything, you can walk right in, go to the classroom and see who you're gonna be with and meet your teachers. Um, the first day of school is September 5th. That is the first day, the day, doors open at eight. So that was a whole lot, y'all okay out there? All right, I am here for questions. And so if you have questions, myself and I have an entire staff that's been here, they're more than happy to help you. There is a table full of resources. Come get the resources. Supply list, uh, the accounts of it. We sent a packet home, but if you did get it, you can come get it. And feel free to look through the reading materials. And thank you all. Let's have a great year, okay? Yay! That's a lot of information. I'm so excited.